so many ways. He was called the helper. And when he was, when, when this generation was being thought about, the Holy Spirit targeted us. And he targeted a certain part of us. And he said, I'm going to visit you there. And I'm going to look at Joel 2, very famous scripture. It says, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Where is the main place that the Holy Spirit is going to engage with us in this season of history? The eyes. He has promised that he's going to give us vision and he's going to give us dreams. He wants to engage with us in the eyes. Now listen, that, does, is, that should come to no surprise because if we look at what is where most of life takes place, if we want to know something about our friends, we don't call them, we look, right? We look on Facebook, Instagram, all the different places, right? If we want to know something about news, we look. If we want to know something, we look. If we want to entertain ourselves, we play video games. We, we watch movies. We engage. Most of life is taking place in the eyes. And you know what? The Holy Spirit knew this, and he said, you know what? That's where I'm going to visit them. I am going to visit them in their eyes. I'm going to fellowship with them in their eyes. I'm going to fill their eyes with light. I'm going to pour out my spirit, and they're going to be visited in the eyes. So it should come by no surprise that that's where the enemy comes. No surprise, right? <laughs> and yet, God is saying, I want to fellowship with you in the eyes. Eyes of our understanding that the eyes that what we pay attention to, what we perceive through, how we perceive, has to be filled with light. God is so great. He's like, you know what? There's a lamp stand in front of my throne. I have a lamp. I have a lamp stand, and it's called the Holy Spirit. It's the seven spirits of God, and they're forever burning. And you know what? I put that spirit inside of you. And that spirit is going to impact your eyes. That spirit is going to impact your eyes, and it's fiery. There is fire, there is fire coming out of the Holy Spirit to impact our eyes and how we look and how we perceive. And I felt like today, even right now, I just wanted to take a moment for baptism of fire upon our eyes. Because what is that fire? That fire is to empower us so that we can see clearly, we can perceive. Your whole being would be filled with light. It would affect your emotional life. It would affect your thought life, and it would affect your will. And what do they give themselves, these ones that have eyes everywhere? What are they giving themselves to? Day and night worship. Day and night worship. They're giving themselves to holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And now there's so much wisdom between about day and night worship. But I'm beginning to understand that one aspect of the wisdom of day and night worship is that we would engage our eyes with higher things. We would engage our eyes. Like there's something about worship and engaging in worship that fills us with the Spirit. Let's now God desires that we would have, He would fellowship with us in our eyes. He doesn't just want to fellowship with us in our talking, but he wants to actually fellowship with us in our eyes. He has given us the helper, and he says, and if you look in verse 14, it says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. And then he says, Don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he says how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. How is it? To sing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. To make melody in our hearts. To sing. So there is an aspect of staying filled with the Holy Spirit. And how do we keep remaining filled with the Holy Spirit? We sing. That's such an interesting thing. Now when I've done this, I've always thought of, yeah, just be filled with the Holy Spirit. That will help me to have more self-control. That will help me be good. That will help me have goodness flowing out of me. But there's something more. And that's what I want to talk about. It's in the eyes, too. 
that as we as we attend as we attend to him in worship it begins to center our heart our mind our will on him and that begins to impact how we perceive how we look at things it begins to cause us to be satisfied with it and that our eyes would not try to be satisfied by other things see God knows about our eyes. You know that he said in a proverb, I think it's Proverbs 27, 20. Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of men are never satisfied. He knows the way we're made. He knows all of that. But he's like, you know what, though? My spirit will help you be satisfied. And it's not just a one time. Like, if it was just one time, he just prayed for fire right now, and now it's all done. And now you'll never look at worthless things. That would, that would be beautiful, but that's not going to happen. What's going to need to happen is that we engage with the Holy Spirit all the time. And you know what's part of that is that we continue in worship. I realized, I was like, God, that is so brilliant. The one that you filled with eyes, you gave us a picture. They're living creatures that participate in day and night worship. They're being impacted in their eyes. Isn't that interesting? I mean, I, I was thinking, why did you put so many eyes? I mean, I know there's a, probably a thousand reasons why he put that many eyes. But he's also saying, I can satisfy eyes. They have tons of eyes, and they're worshiping me, and they're being filled with me over and over and over again. So I began to think, wow, worship. And what I'm thinking about is a lot of times, even in worship, with our distracted culture, we have a hard time fully focusing. But God is going to, he is going to empower us to help us to focus. I would be given wisdom. There would be a divine focus. My eyes of understanding, what I give my imagination to, would be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Is Daniel was really smart, right? He was naturally smart. He was filled with intellect. He said that, you know, all him and the guys, they could compete with anyone. But what made him different is that he dreamed dreams. He saw visions. He prophesied. And I believe that in order to influence a culture, especially those who are from Los Angeles, we live in Babylon. It is prophesied all over, even in the streets of Hollywood and Highland. There's Babylonian gods, you know, five stories tall. How do you influence in the midst of Babylon? By prophesying. By prophesying. By prophesying. By, uh, by dreaming dreams, seeing visions, and being given wisdom and understanding. Wisdom and understanding. This is why, oh, God has... Your destiny is that you are going to have victory in your eyes. And you are not going to be... Because <laughs> this is not just a man's issue. This is a woman's issue. We get to eat from the knowledge of good and evil every day by reading Instagram and Facebook over and over and over and over again. We're just as addicted. We're just as addicted. It's not like perverse, but it's it's keeping us. It's keeping us distracted. It's keeping us from the purity of just receiving from the Lord. And you know what? Daniel knew the delicacies of this age could keep him from the purposes of God and how to influence in the midst of Babylon. And so he had a purpose in his heart not to give himself to the delicacies of this age. And you know what? We are going to do the same. Because it is worth it. Because we do want to be filled with light. There's nowhere else for the world to find light. We are the only ones. They can find solutions to poverty. They can find solutions for medicine. They can do lots of things in lots of places. But they can only find light in one place. And that is the children of God. And if we do not have light. If we are filled with darkness. Where will they find it? Where will they find it? This is why to be stewards of our eyes, to, th to, th to th yeah, throw off some of the delicacies of this age and give ourselves to hours in his presence is worth it. Yeah. Yeah. It's worth it that we would be 